The reason I make cheese is because I have a lot of milk and I have to use it up. And so that's why wheels that I can age make the most sense for me because I can like stockpile the milk in the form of cheese and I don't have to eat it all the time. But I understand that a lot of you prefer fresh cheeses and fast cheeses. My name is Jennifer and today I'm going to make queso fresco. I got my recipe from Home Cheese Making, the basic pressed cheese. And I've never made it. This is gonna splash. Can you hold the lid for me? It's about three and a half. I'm gonna do a little bit more. The recipe calls for two gallons of milk. I'm using four gallons of milk, whole cow's milk. The mesophilic cheese that does not go very high, only up to 95 degrees. So I'm gonna be using Floridanica as my culture, and I'm going to be using rennet, and it does not take much rennet. And then it's just a quick heat stir process, press process, done. Ooh, heavy. This gets heated to 90 degrees. I heat the milk on high and we are right at yep, 90 degrees. If I was adding calcium chloride, here's the point at which I would add calcium chloride. I'm not doing that. I'm going to add my freeze dried culture, which is approximately a quarter teaspoon per gallon of milk. So a teaspoon of Floridanica or a cup of clabber culture or a cup of buttermilk, sprinkling that on top, giving it a couple minutes to rehydrate before stirring it in. And then for the rennet, it's for this recipe, a quarter teaspoon per every two gallons. So I'm doing a half teaspoon. You dilute that in a little bit of cool water. So two minutes is up. I'm gonna give this a stir. Now that that's worked in, I'm gonna do the rennet and stir this just for 30 seconds because you, once it starts setting up, you don't wanna keep stirring because that will break the set. And you stir kind of lifting the spoon up and down like this and kind of sliding it around the pot. Sometimes in the beginning I give a good stir like that, but generally it's a slow lift and drop, lift and push down stir. I scoop into the corners, the corners, not the corners, it's a round pot. There we go. That's mixed enough. You just steady it and lift it out. Now this is going to rest for about 30 minutes or so to set up and then I'll come back and check for the clean break and we'll move on to the next step. So it's time to check for a clean break. Oh, I don't think it's ready. Nope, still liquidy. See how juicy that is? Can't even cut it. So let's go for another at least 20 minutes. Mm, still looks a little sludgy to me. You can cut it a little bit better, but it's pretty slumpy. Let's give it another 20 minutes. It's much firmer. You can see the way that's pulling on top. Cut it and see. Yeah, that's a good break. So I'm going to cut this into a quarter inch cubes. So pretty small. I could probably do this with a whisk, but I'm just doing it this way right now. And then I will cut them smaller as I'm stirring them. Five minutes to heal. Curds are rested. So now for the next 20 minutes, I am going to stir them gently and raise the temperature to 95 degrees. So it's right around 90 now. It's gonna just go up a little bit. I don't have to stir them steadily. I could do it every few minutes, but in the beginning, I'm going to stir steadily because I'm gonna be breaking up the large lumps. All right, so we are at the 95 degree point and that took about nine to 10 minutes. And I even turned off the stove once. So it's a pretty quick heat, about 10 minutes. This is what the curds look like. They're kind of soft and squidgy, it's just a very loose curd. So what it says to do now is add the salt and then let it sit for 30 minutes in the whey. It's a tablespoon of salt per gallon of milk. So four tablespoons is a quarter cup. I'm gonna stir for about a minute just to make sure it's dissolved. I'm gonna let this sit for 30 minutes. I made a mistake after cooking the curds and raising it to 95 degrees. Let them sit for five minutes, drain off the whey, then add the salt and let them sit for 30 minutes. So it has been 20 minutes right now. I'm gonna scoop off as much whey as possible and then I'll probably add two more tablespoons of salt because I'm losing a bunch in the way. I'll taste it and see how it is. <sighs> That's what I get for doing too much today. Let's see what I'm doing. I'll show you what I'm doing. Church business. I am doing cake making. Over there are cheeses that I am cleaning up and then I'm going to backpack them. I am doing what well, my kids are doing, all the dishes. Let's scoop off this way. The pigs. 
are in the process of being transferred into vacuum sealed packages. So this way doesn't really have a home. I'm kind of sad, we need to get more pigs. Oh dear, that's just, this is gonna be hard to do. Let me get this. Pretty big cheese. That's enough for now. Now I'm gonna add two more tablespoons of salt and just stir this up. Oh, it feels so nice. Oh, it tastes good. It's buttery and creamy. Mmm, that's better than I expected. It's kind of like not rubbery and like it hasn't gotten a shell on the outside. It's not dried out. It's very moist. That is delicious, but I think it's going to need more salt. I'm going to add another tablespoon right now. I think I lost an awful lot in that way. Adding salt to it slows the acid development. It'll also make it a little bit harder to knit together, which makes it a little bit crumblier. That's better, but... It still doesn't taste overly salty. Okay, I'm gonna let this go for like another 10 minutes, then we'll put it into the mold. You know, I say this cheese is easy, and then I go and have all sorts of juggling issues, which makes it look really not easy, and kind of defeats my purpose of trying to make this look like an accessible cheese for anybody. Here I am, bungling things. You can put the curds into a bag and hang it up or tie a knot in it and then use the belly method, which is holding the cheese mass against your stomach or the side of the pot and like rubbing it as it's in that bag and it kind of like kneads the curds and expresses way and makes it a firmer mass. And then you just tighten the knot and then put a board on top of it or a jug of oil or whatever you have. And that's the belly method, apparently. I don't know. I have a cheese press, so I'm just gonna use a cheese press because it's easier. I'm gonna strain it into here because I have too much whey in the kettle and it's gonna make a mess of my press. I'm gonna get whey all over the counter. So I'm gonna first put it into this colander. I can't wait for my kids to come home and do the dishes today. This is way too many dishes for me. That's what it looks like after sitting there for 10 minutes. That's how much whey is in there. I was just doing research about queso fresco. It's supposed to be salty and tangy and milky. Mm, that's delicious. It's very milky. They're right about that. It's amazing how little tweaks in technique can really change the flavor of what you're doing. So now that that has had a second, come over here to my pile of dirty dishes. But here's where you could tie it into a knot and hang it and mush it up and get it all kind of together. Or just put it in a press. This is four gallons of milk, eight gallons would be tremendously too much, so take note. Well, I guess I could use the collar. I could probably get six in here, but it's a pretty plump cheese. It says 35 pounds of pressure for six hours, flipping every 30 minutes. I'm not gonna flip it every 30 minutes. I'll flip it every hour or two, and we'll just keep it at a nice medium pressure rate. There's 20, ouch, a little bit more, like 40, because it will loosen up. Oh, there's whey sitting on top. This is a juicy cheese. So time for the first flip of the cheese. It pressed down the whole way to this, so it's resting on here. So there's no more pressure happening. So I'm gonna to have to add in my followers to keep this cheese pressing. It's soft. You can see how it's kind of like smushing in the um, bag. It's dripping also on my floor. Very pliable and it is molding up nicely. It's beautiful. I forgot the followers. Because the boy who will be doing the dishes is coming home shortly, I'm moving the cheese away from the counter because I want him to work there. I'm gonna put it here, keep pressing. I slant this up a little bit, just stick this under so it tips forward and get it back down to 35 or 40. I'll probably come back and do this in about an hour, hour and a half now because I'm heading out on a walk. It is gorgeous outside. Look at how well it is knitting together. It still feels quite soft. It's still a little bit warm, but it is a well-knitted cheese. This has been in the press for two and a half hours at least, so I have about another four hours. So this cheese will be ready to go at supper time. A wheel of cheese. I've never done that before, that you eat it all the same day. That's exciting. It is so well-knitted. It is soft. It's a bit bouncy, but it looks firm. It's come down quite a ways. It smells good. All right, it's right at 50 pounds-ish, 
and I'm gonna let it go till supper and then we are going to eat cheese that is fresh, queso, fresco. Five pounds, 15 ounces, which is huge for four gallons of milk. So what I'm going to do now is put this in the fridge and let it chill a little bit. Hey friends, it's supper time. It's full chaos right now. The kids are outside chasing some type of runaway dog that's out on the road. And my husband was just helping me um, bottle our mead, sour cherry mead. Let me show you. See all that mead over there? That's what we were doing. And I am dishing up food because we're having supper. And I just got the cheese out. So this is what I'm going to cut. And now we get to taste it. Can you see how it's got a little bit slumpy around the sides? It smells fine. It's a little bit like squishiness. It's getting a rind even in the fridge on that, that part. And that part's still white. This is enormous. So I'm gonna cut it. I'm just gonna cut it into like cubes. So here is queso fresco. Let's taste this. It's kind of rubbery and soft. No. It's squeaks. It's delicious. It's tangy. It's good. It's cheese. We're eating it for supper. There's a plate of food with some mead. Cheers. Last night we had that cheese for supper and to be honest, I wasn't that impressed. I didn't really like the rubbery texture and it was good. <sighs> I think it was a salt issue. Now I think I'm going to brine this cheese, even though I've already cut into it, because you can do that. Dum -dum. Slumpy. There's a little bit of moisture on the plate, but not much. Oh, it's less rubbery now. Hmm. But it definitely needs more salt. That is a problem. It's kind of a loose cheese, like not very compact, not very pressed, and it already has salt in it. So I'm going to salt it for maybe eight hours or so, like hour and a half per pound of cheese. I'm actually gonna put these on in too. This, this actually reminds me of feta. Actually, maybe that'll become feta. Let's see. Oh, it's not so specific. All these different cheeses. We act like there's a specific recipe for something, but really, I think you can wing a lot of it. Like the shape and the texture of it feels like feta. So why not make it feta? Is there a law against that? Probably trademarks and everything, but I'm in my own kitchen. Who cares? Here's my question. Because it has a mesophilic culture in, because it has rennet in, because it's salted, and it's like just a cheese, what happens if you take this queso fresco and you treat it like an ordinary cheese? What is it like? Is it gonna be like a bel paese? Is it gonna be like an alpine tome? Is it gonna be like a, a buda queso, a Monterey Jack, a gouda? It's gonna be different, I can tell that, but what is it gonna be like? So I think I'll just take half of the cheese. There's no law against cutting into cheese. It doesn't have to be a circular shape. I can create a rind at any level. If I just rind it a little bit, then set it out and air dry it, and then, either let a natural rind develop or backpack it and age it. You can do whatever you want. So here we go in an experiment. What happens if you take a wheel of fresh cheese, cut it up, eat part of it, age the second part of it? You got options, people. Maybe, we'll see if this works. I took out these little pieces of feta. That's <laughs> not feta. Little pieces of queso fresco after 10 minutes, 12 minutes, and they are very salty. They are no longer rubbery and they taste like feta. I took this one out after about 20 minutes. I haven't tried it yet, but let's see. See, it kind of tears like feta. It's saltier, but it's not salty salty yet. I had gum in my mouth, I can't really tell. Yeah, it's fine. The big cheese has been in here for an hour. I'm not gonna do the whole six or eight hours, like I said, because this is like a sponge. I really think it's getting a lot of salt. I think this is time to come out. I don't want to turn it into a whole block of feta. I'll let this air dry for a couple days and then I'll probably backpack it. Flipped last night, putting it this morning. I think I'm just gonna stick it in the fridge right now, actually. So the bigger chunks didn't quite finish melting, but these are melting right here. You can see, oh yeah. So this cheese melts quite fine. Look at that. This is all I have left. I gave away huge amounts to my mom and dad, my brother's family, my friend. I never actually aged it. We're like 
almost two weeks out and this is just sitting in the fridge and looking absolutely fantastic. My mood for this cheese has kind of gone like, oh, this is awesome. Oh, this is terrible. Eh, this might be okay. That's ordinary cheese. Wait, it's great cheese. No, it's not good cheese. I'm all over the place. But I have landed two weeks later on the opinion that this cheese is pretty darn amazing. It is not rubbery anymore. It melts fabulously. If you want to learn how to make a cheese and don't want to invest much time or much energy, make queso fresco. This is a very fine cheese for minimal effort. And that's final.